What you're looking at right here is the much anticipated and brand new Mi Band 7, which is a sequel to one of the best selling smart bands of all time, and honestly, to some extent, smartwatch killer, delivering many new features, such as an incredibly low price, heart rate tracking, sleep tracking, and many, many more. So the Mi Band 7 clearly has some pretty big shoes to fill, but honestly, it does that pretty well. So this has some pretty substantial improvements, including a 25% larger display that's brighter, easier to read, has an always on display mode, this also has substantially better fitness tracking with more workouts, VO2 max, and recovery time estimates. And on top of that, it also works better as a smartwatch with better readability, more notifications, and other features we'll talk about throughout this video. But of course, we'll dive into how this actually compares to the Mi Band 6 in just a minute, but let's start off with just a physical design of the new Mi Band 7. So much like most of the other Mi Bands, this is rated for five atmospheres of water resistance. It's actually really easy to replace the strap as well, just by popping out the little device in the middle, and the strap is just a silicone band. It has the same design as the old ones, where you feed it through a loop, and then on the back you can snap it into whatever hole you want, I find it very comfortable. It, it's a little tricky to do it one-handed, like yeah, it takes some getting used to, but once you get used to it, very comfortable and very easy. Additionally, you can replace the color with whatever you want. I mean, I have just a little baby blue one here and a black one, and just switching between those feels like a completely different device. Now, let's take a closer look at the actual unit itself. So we have a 1.62 inch AMOLED display, and this sounds really similar to every other Mi Band, but it's actually substantially wider. Now, this display is 25% larger because it's wider, and so you're getting a, a really a nice display that feels a lot more like a smartwatch and a lot less like a fitness band. So by that, I mean you can actually read notifications on here, and they can pack a, a really incredible amount of information onto such a small display that in my opinion is still very readable. Additionally, having that larger display is really advantageous if you're going for a run and you want to see at a quick glance some information. Again, the larger display with a lot of color on there goes a long way. Now it's also an AMOLED display as I said, so it's very bright and very vibrant. This one is also brighter than the Mi Band 6, and so even in the brightest daylight I tested this, so as you can see my arm is totally washed out from how bright it is outside, but you can still read the display. Now there are many different watch faces on here. If you get the Zep Light or Zep Life app, you'll actually be able to swap these out. Um, this is no longer using the Mi app, they just moved to Zep, it's kind of a rebranding thing there. But a lot of the watch faces do look pretty decent. With the larger display, you're getting more information on here, and you can go back to some simpler ones as well, including this one, which shows Mars. Now there is no home button on here, I'll show you the interface in a second, but essentially, you'll be swiping from the left to the right to go back or to go home. And if we flip the Mi Band over to the back, you'll see we have our two nodes for charging, and it comes with a little magnetic charger in the box, which is actually strong enough to hold this from an outlet, so if you you have this charging, you don't need to worry about an extension cable or anything. And next to that, we'll see the array of health sensors. Of course, we've got the heart rate sensor on here, which I will test out for accuracy. And we have a blood oxygen monitor, which is improved to now have all day blood oxygen monitoring. So let's dive deeper into the Mi Band 6 compared to the Mi Band 7. I mentioned that the display is 1.62 inches. The old one was 1.56. That sounds really, really close, but the difference is that's actually a diagonal measurement, and the Mi Band 6 is a lot narrower. So the Mi Band 7 is actually 25% larger. It also has substantially more sport modes on here, and it has actually a slightly brighter display offering 500 nits versus 450 nits. There's mostly the same connectivity and mostly the same sensors, except the Mi Band 7 is using Bluetooth 5.2 instead of 5.0. And as I mentioned about having more activities to track, when it comes to workouts, the Mi Band 7 really has a big improvement with 110 activities versus 30, but personally, I don't really get that excited about that. Like uh, 110 workouts, I don't think I've done 110 different workouts in my life. I think 30 is probably just fine. Most of the time I'm just using this for running, maybe lifting weights, but you know what, if you're doing something a little bit more esoteric, maybe the 110 is really going to give you what you need. With the blood oxygen sensor, we're also able to get some more advanced metrics like uh, anaerobic tra training notifications, recovery time estimates, and VO2 max, which is really nice to get a general baseline of where your cardiovascular fitness is. So other than that, they really are very similar devices, some subtle software improvements, but I'm gonna show you the interface now because that is, uh, with the larger display, you're really getting a, a pretty different experience on here. 
So taking a look at the interface, the always on display is dependent on the watch face. So you can see this watch face has a lot of information all the way around and the wider display really makes it pretty readable. If we swipe up or down, it takes us through a loop and in this loop, you'll see that we've got a lot of different things here. The personal in, uh, activity intelligence, that's just basically a little summary of your day so far. Uh, we've got heart rate, we've got PAI, which I think also stands for personal activity intelligence, but that's just a single score to kind of give you a digestible index of how well you're doing. Then if we go back, uh, of course, swiping from the left brings you back. We've got blood oxygen, we've got workouts with 110 different workouts. We've got workout history, we've got workout status, uh, which is so kind of redundant right there. We've got stress, sleep, weather, and of course, weather you can set to wherever, whatever location you want or your current location. And as you scroll down, you can see it shows us a lot of information, including the weather for pretty much the rest of the week. So I think that's really useful. We've got music controls that'll just control what music's being played on your phone. You can set alarms on here and then it'll just vibrate. There is no sound, but the vibrating motor in here will wake you up or it wakes me up at least. We've got events, so that's your calendar. We've got flashlights, the whole screen just gets kind of bright. We can go to settings or we can go down to more. And if you tap on more, uh, you'll see that we have quite a few more things here that I just did not add to my main loop. So we've got female health tracking, we've got breathing exercises, a timer, a stopwatch, find my phone, event reminder, uh, a, a, a different kind of timer down here, and of course the remote shutter to take pictures with your phone. So if we go back, we just keep swiping from the left, we can also go through and have a quick access for any of our kind of the tiles is what, what you might want to call them. So our weather widget over here, uh, you can again, this is interactive. So if you tap on it, it'll bring you into that weather app. So if I just tap on it, you can go and scroll through and it's going to do the same thing that we saw below, but it's just more accessible right here through these little tiles. So if we go to the next one, this is music control. We've got exercises here. We've got heart rate here, blood oxygen, stress, breathing, and I just went back to this, but you can customize all of that within the app. So like I said, the app is pretty basic. You can go to store and see a ton of different watch faces, all different styles, including photos and things like that on there. You can set notifications and reminders in here. You can check out some health monitoring settings, go to band settings, uh, app settings. There's a lot of different things you could do here. Now, this also has a find band feature, which is kind of weird because if it's sitting sideways, this is silicone, so it dampens it a lot, so you can't really hear it. But if it happens to be sitting on its face, you probably can hear it. So I don't know, it's better than nothing. Some additional things to note with the interface, you're getting over a hundred different watch faces. You can't get third party apps, but whatever is in the actual app on your phone, you can put it on here pretty easily. And you can also reject or silence calls. So rather than just rejecting, we all know if you're getting a scam caller and you reject them, that tells the system that you are responsive and you will get a lot more phone calls. Whereas if you just silence it, you're less likely to get more phone calls later in the day. So when it comes to battery life with the Mi Band 7, they claim that it has 14 days of battery life but it depends on what you're doing with it. The always on display can definitely kill the battery a lot quicker. So I have the always on display set to on. I wanted to see how fast I could possibly kill this battery. And by on, I don't mean the automatic mode that it has where it detects when it's off your wrist or when you're asleep and it, and it turns that off. I meant I forced it to be on the entire time. Additionally, I had a pretty long workout and I got a lot of notifications. I got two updates in the past 24 hours for some reason on here and I really use this a lot. So with that being said, yesterday I was at 90% and today I'm at 56%. If you extrapolate that, that gives me about three days of battery life if you're really, really pushing it. So I think that's the absolute worst case scenario. I think most people will probably expect to see closer to about nine days of battery life with this device. But unfortunately, I wasn't seeing the 14 day battery life that they actually claimed. Now, maybe with no always on display, maybe with no really limited notifications and not much working out, you could probably stretch this to 14 days, yes, but I don't know, that was my experience right there. Now, let's actually get into a little bit more about the fitness tracking, including a GPS and accuracy test. So first of all, the Mi Band 7 still unfortunately did not get GPS. This is something I was really hoping to see eventually. I know it killed a battery. I know it's a small affordable device, but still we're seeing GPS on things like the Fitbit Charge 5, even the Fitbit Charge 4. And yes, that's more expensive, but this is the seventh iteration of this. I would like to see GPS. Regardless, you are actually able to use connected GPS. So if you run with your phone, which you kind of have to do or else it won't save your workout anyway, then yes, it does have connected GPS. It'll use your phone's GPS. But the benefit here is you are getting some better fitness tracking, like I said, with 110 different sport modes, VO2 max, which is what they call uh, professional workout measurements, 
And you also, of course, get sleep monitoring. You get all day SpO2 monitoring with alerts for low blood, blood oxygen levels. But let's take a look at how accurate this actually was. Something the Mi Bands have always done really well, which is pretty surprising, is actually heart rate. Now, the heart rate, as you can see right here on this graph, is based on a 40 minute run where I ran at a steady state for the first half and then did sprint intervals at the end. Now, typically, optical heart rate sensors on devices way more expensive than this struggle with intervals. But as you can see right here, when I compared this to the Polar H10, which is a known accurate heart rate chest strap, it's actually really close. It tracked the intervals very well, even though it's an optical heart rate sensor. And although it was slightly low at some points, I was really impressed with the overall accuracy here. So I've always been a really big fan of the Mi Bands, the Mi Band 4, 5, 6, and now the 7, and because they're just such easy devices to recommend. They're affordable, they're small, they're discreet, and they're great for fitness tracking, of course, but also they kind of work as a smartwatch replacement as well. So anybody looking to get into just a basic smartwatch, you don't wanna spend a lot of money, but you want notifications, you want weather, you want a remote camera control, this is a great device for that. But not everything is perfect. So I wanna talk about some of the drawbacks I faced with the Mi Band 7, Although they are pretty limited, there are a couple you want to be aware of. The first thing is that I do miss the home button. This sounds weird, I'm happy that we have a larger display, but the lack of a home button on here means that you're going to end up swiping back a lot. And so if you end up swiping back a lot, sometimes this can feel a little bit sluggish. Like it's not, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm used to 120 hertz on my phone and this just feels a little slower, but you know, it is what it is. Additionally, and probably the biggest one on here is that there is no auto brightness. So automatically changing the brightness is something that many other fitness bands do. This one does not, and so you have to set the brightness on your own. And so if you're in a bright environment or a dim environment, it's usually either too bright or too dim. I kind of left it at like the 70% level, and, and usually that's pretty good, but again, I wish it would automatically adjust that. There is also no GPS on here, as I mentioned before. I mean, it's affordable, it's a small device, I can't really knock it for that one, but one thing I really do wish this had is NFC. So NFC has been on the, the China versions for a really long time, since like the Mi Band 4, but this, this one right here, still doesn't have that. So in the United States, if you wanna to go to a gas station and just buy like a Gatorade or something, you can't do it with this. But like I said, the Mi Band 7 is overall a really impressive device. While it's not a complete overhaul over the Mi Band 6, it is still subtly improved in many different categories, making it overall a better device. But leave a comment and let me know what you think about the Mi Band 7. Do you think it can compete with the others on the market, or is there something you wish it had? If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Michael Bryan, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.